Howdy y'all, welcome back, thank you for being here. The acoustic vibrations, the tiniest of variations in sound, the mostly imperceivable reaction of living things to the frequencies around them, harmony and harmonics. The biblical tale of Joshua and the trumpets, one embodiment of the concept of moving objects with the use of sound. The Krakatoa volcanic eruption of 1883, for example, was so loud, the sound waves, the vibrations, the frequency, could be heard over 2,700 miles away. If we look to extrapolate on these ideas a bit further, if we're looking at biblical terms, things were often described as not formed, but rather spoken into existence. God uses sound to create everything that we see written about in the Bible. Genesis 1, for example, is full of the phrase, and God said. And most scholars determine that in this context, the plants and the life were not just created by the sound, but rather by using the specific sound, a specific frequency, to access Earth's potential. Even in the Bible, we see different frequencies, different vibrations, being used to unlock different aspects of our universe. Many look at passages like Hebrews 11.3 and John 1.1, 1, 1, which detail that the universe was created from the word of God, that he spoke the world into existence. Some esoteric circles examine the concept further and look at spelling, as in to cast spells, and the entire concept of language as the main source of power, which was used to shape our world. Look at gematria, related to the Bible. Still, others take it more literally and believe that harmonics created the plane on which we live. Looking at string theory and modern concepts for the understanding of reality, we're again presented with the concept that everything in existence is a form of vibration, a resonance, a specific and tightly knit set of variations that make us who we are. Bell metal or bronze bell is a metal alloy that has been used for at least 3,000 years and is known for its unique resonance and attractive, disarming sound. Seemingly indicating the routine dismantling of history, which we have often come across, we have a progression of bell metal history, which doesn't really add up. It doesn't account for the discovery and enchantment made on this metal thousands of years ago, nor do we have even a defined understanding of how and why church bells developed in the way that they did. First, we are told bell metal, which is essentially the same recipe more or less throughout the world and throughout the last 3,000 years. We're told bell metal is made up of a roughly 4 to 1 ratio of copper to tin, or roughly 78% copper to 22% tin. We're told, miraculously, that bell metal was developed or founded independently by multiple kingdoms throughout history with the exact place of origin being difficult to determine. The current narrative makes note that the finest and possibly the earliest Christian bells were founded in Russia, which at the time may have also been known as Tartary or Grand Tartaria. We're told these Russians, the Tartarians, often added silver and gold to their bell metals, which was noted as slightly altering the frequency or extending the range of the bell. In Buddhism, a unique five metal recipe was formed thousands of years ago, which represented the five Buddhas, also called the five wisdoms. These master class bells included copper, the discriminating wisdom, tin, the accomplishing wisdom, zinc, the mirror wisdom, iron, the wisdom of equality, and lead, representing absolute reality. Older Vedic texts make mention of a seven metal bell recipe, which was warned to be highly potent. That also included gold and silver, in addition to the other five metals mentioned previously. The holy seven metal alloy of ancient Buddhism was also used to create other masterful instruments. If you've read any theories on Tartaria or Tartary, and if you've tuned into any number of my other videos on the subject matter, you might recognize that the traditional location for the first men, meaning the first enlightened individuals according to theories to proceed forth from their dwellings and form an understanding of math, language, 
agriculture and architecture, which was then spread throughout the world, the basis for the society that we live in today, came from the regions of northern India and Russia in this theory, a location that was often labeled on ancient maps as Tartary or Grand Tartaria. Now, we have a current narrative understanding that bell metal and bell making derived directly from these exact same landscapes, the former Tartaria. That brief yet important tidbit in this narrative becomes a point of contention as we continue through this narrative. Did the Crusades from 1095 through 1291 actually aim to disband, destroy, and disenfranchise the bells of the old world, the bells of Tartaria? We're told the Spanish and the Portuguese, when invading Java and the surrounding Thailand and Myanmar, discovered the usage of seven and five metal by the local kingdoms and tribes. We're told those in Thailand and the surrounding regions also use bell metal to create ornate figurine sculptures and household goods for the wealthy and the elite. Bell metal was said to be coveted in those lands as it could subdue even the most evil of spirits. Remarkably to the Spanish and the Portuguese, however, was the fact that bell metal was not only being used for these bells and other goods, but was actually being used to construct large cannons and even hand cannons known as lantaca. Essentially, when the Spanish and the Portuguese arrived, the people already had a vast understanding of metallurgy, and the people of Java had cannons made of bell metal, which is the first documented occurrence of this in history. Furthermore, we're told the bronze cannons and the bronze bells of Java were far superior to those of Europe, and when presented with European arms, the people of Java laughed and declined as their bell metal was far more advanced than European metals. Could this history truly be a hiding of the Tartarian bell metal? Yes, we are told that bell metal was superior in Java, however, we're also told when one of the largest cities in Indonesia was captured by the Spanish, over 3,000 massive bell metal cannons were found lining the city, except every single cannon was tied, pointed vertically to a pole, and placed outside every major building in the city as a decoration rather than a weapon. The Spanish were bewildered by this. Additionally, when we dive into the history of church bells and the bells of Christianity, we find that up until roughly the year 600, bells were not common in Europe and almost never seen. Up until that point, church gatherings were designated by the blowing of a trumpet horn. In Greece, the horn was replaced by the ringing of a large metal plate. In 604 AD, Pope Sabinian officially sanctioned the usage of bells. These initial Christian bells were rudimentary and rather small in size, often unable to produce the amazing bell frequencies we are familiar with today. It wasn't until roughly the late 600s and the early 700s that bell making was first perfected in Europe. This was said to have occurred in Campania, Italy, and then bells in Europe became consistently known as Campania or Nola, both names from the eponymous city of this region. However, seemingly adding to our discussion of the first men, the Tartarians, being the progenitors of bell metal, we're told that bells became commonplace in Europe due to the Celtic influence. Little is explained about this, however, there's significant evidence tying the early Celtic people to northern India, and the similarity of the runes and symbols used as well as the construction of similar earthworks have led many to speculate the Celtic bells of Europe may be the same origin of the Russian, Indian, or sometimes called Tartarian bells of Asia. Now diving into this further, bell making and bell metal in Europe was said to have been brought to the limelight in Campania. Campania is Italy's third most populous region, which well over 5 million people call home. The capital of this region is Naples, the third largest urban area in the European Union. However, what really makes Campania stand out is the fact it is home to 10 of Italy's 58 World Heritage Sites, including Pompeii and Mount Vesuvius. The original inhabitants of Campania were said to be the Etruscans, which again, were often tied to the origin of mankind itself, and this seems to go hand in hand with the sea peoples and other concepts in other further foreign lands. We're looking at the first men in Tartary, but can we relate this to the bells of the old world? 
By the year 800, the bells of Campania were situated all throughout Europe, and bells were adopted by most places of worship, which leads me very nicely into the Oxford Electric Bell, an experimental electric bell that has been ringing continuously since being founded in 1840. However, let's focus on the word founded here. The bell's Wikipedia page lacks any information on who created this bell, why, or how it was done. Essentially, two brass bells are positioned underneath two dry piles, or batteries, which are connected in a series, giving the bells opposite electric charges. Due to this, the clapper rings the bells alternately due to electrostatic forces. When the clapper touches one bell, it is charged by that pile and then repelled away, as the clapper would then have the same charge. The clapper is then attracted to the opposite pile, where a similar process occurs, so on and so forth, so that the clapper continues to ring the bells, leading to oscillation. We're told the two piles, the batteries, have not been charged since 1840, and most likely will not need charged again for hundreds if not thousands of years. What's remarkable? The exact makeup of the batteries is not known, and will most likely never be known until the device stops working, which is unlikely to occur in our lifetimes. Many claim the Oxford Electric Bell is a form of perpetual motion machine, and it is, in fact, one of three long-term physics experiments that have been occurring over the last 200 years, also including the Beverly Clock and the Pitch Drop experiments. Due to the Oxford Electric Bell having been discovered already running in 1840, some have theorized the bell was produced as far back as 1825, meaning come January of 2025, this bell would have been ringing continuously for 200 years. I am going to wrap up the video there. Honestly, before I go, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here. This work, my research, my discoveries would not be possible without each and every one of you who is intrigued by the mysteries of the old world. I see many out there who are diving into these topics head first and with your experiences and mine, hopefully we will be able to enlighten others and heighten the intrigue into the real history of our world. 